Welcome into No Boundaries. I'm Laura McGoldrick. Very excited to have with me two fabulous gentlemen ready to talk cricket with you. I've got Mike Hesson coming in from Dunedin. Doesn't look too pretty back there. Laura. Yes, what's going on behind you? Oh, I've had to block the sun out, Laura, otherwise oh. it would just be too much for you. I thought it was raining. OK, never mind, Hess. And I've also got joining us for the first time on No Boundaries, Dion Nash. How are you, Dion? Very good. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here to talk some cricket. And cricket we have to talk about because we are, of course, getting ready uh, for the ICC Cricket World Cup, which is happening uh, later this year over in India. And we have a few tours. We have three tours, in fact, uh, to prepare and get a team ready uh, to take on that tournament uh, for New Zealand. So, so Hess, I'll start with you. The Black Caps have announced an ODI squad uh, to go to England. Uh, that's post their uh, UAE series. Um, what did you make of the squad and how do you think they're going to go? Well, I think there's a few talking points, really. Obviously, Trent Bolt back, so hopefully he plays his first ODI in, in probably over 12 months. So that's a pretty clear indication that he's going to be World Cup bound, which is good to see. Um, Jameson, uh, I think we're all pleased to see him back uh, in the mix there. And he provides that option of, you know, whether he could bat at potentially eight, seven or eight, be that third seamer um, over in India where, uh, you know, I think it's going to be spin dominant especially in two or three of the venues that we play. So that role is going to be pretty critical. Obviously, without Nisham and, and Chapman playing, uh, that provides probably an opportunity or a lifeline for Nichols um, to push his case. Um, and Will Young as well, I think, to probably cement, you know, what he's done over the last sort of 12 to 24 months in ODI cricket. So, uh, and I guess without Sodi there, uh, Ravindra has also got his chance to to show that come in um, the World Cup time that he's he's able to be that number one or potentially number two spin. So we know that um, uh, Jimmy Nisham and Mark Chapman are staying home for the uh, impending birth of their children. Um, we've also got Kane Williamson who'll be travelling with the team who will be doing his rehab and training with the team as well. Dion, when you look at the side, um, is this the, the blueprint, I suppose, barring a couple of people, for this World Cup squad? Do you, do you like what you see? Do you like the balance or are you worried? Oh, I'm not, well, I'm not worried. I think they're, they're probably still searching. I think it does look a little bit like they're trying to work out what their, their ultimate lineup's going to be, and they're probably hoping a few of these guys are going to come back and be fit uh, or prove their fitness. Um, I think it's, a, it's always... We're caught, caught in a difficult time with Kyle Jamieson because we're coming from winter. He hasn't had any cricket, but to go straight into a squad playing international cricket, it's a big step up. Um, and I think it would have been ideal for him to have played you know, a, a series of sort of lower great games um, to work his way into it and get get the feeling of being out there and really playing within himself a bit but um you know they've got to get him back into the mix he's uh, too good a player um, and then yeah great to have Trent Bolt back I think he'll bring some real experience and in, um, into the group and leadership but I think they're in a little bit of a wait and see pattern and um, probably trying to keep their options open. I don't know why that scares me so much we're so close <laughs> to a World Cup uh, you look at Trent Bolt he was um, dominant in that uh, Major League Cricket over in Dallas and uh, for, for you Dion when you when you look at this side and you think about the fact that you know they are going to India how, how much do you think we'll see pace over there how important is Southey, Henry, Ferguson, uh, Jameson, Milne going to be over there. How much are we going to use them compared to, yeah, will we see a, a Ranch and Ravindra? Will we see Ish play a big role in it? Mitchell Santner, what's your take on playing in India? I mean, we've got these three series coming up, which are not at all like what we're going to see in India in terms of conditions. So who are you looking for to get the most out of in these series? Yeah, oh, well, I mean, I think that's the big question, Mark, that we're all wondering what the conditions will be like for the World Cup. I mean, historically, obviously, the subcontinent, the slower pitches that turn and, and as the as the tournament goes on you'd expect that to become the case you know the pitches will probably wear and become a little more tired but um, you know having said that the IPL now is you know such an international event that, that they will have taken all of that knowledge and and they'll want a spectacle so I think we'll see flat good batting pitches by and large um, and so then it comes down to really how good a bowlers they are and in, in, in the one day format as opposed to the conditions I think so um, you know it'll, it'll be a test for them for sure um, it's not it's not going to be easy it never is over there um, but I, I just think that, that having Trent Bolt back having Saudi there those two will stand up and lead um, and I think it's just about the combinations that come around there um, and I, I think what we probably need is one or two of those part-time bowlers who, who are going to ha end up having quite significant roles in certain matches you know that it, it's just sometimes it, it, that's how it works in the subcontinent someone who wasn't picked to do a job ends up bowling 10 really crucial overs so I think that street smarts um, that's what I'd be looking for in, in those those sort of part-time bowlers and who's going to stand up and show that you know in their second role um, they can really do a job for us because I think that will be the, the difference. 
uh, in that Saudi bolt uh, combination that Dion was just talking about there, yes, we haven't seen it in a long time. You know, we, we've just, the, the end of an era with Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad in, in the test arena, uh, these two boys have bowled a lot together. I'm sure they'll be feeling, well, it's a bit of nostalgia after almost a year of, of, of not playing together. They'll be looking forward to that. But what's it going to be like for you, do you think, for Trent coming back into this environment? I mean, he's, he's shaken it up, for, for lack of a better term. He was the first to really go out and say, right, I'm going to say no to my New Zealand contract. I'm going to go and do see what this is like out here. How do you think he's going to be accepted in the group when he comes back? Uh, just fine. I, I think they'll be keen to have him back. I mean, he does the, the tough job. He bowls up front. He's now developed a knuckleball, which we saw in, in America um, and we've seen again uh, in tournaments since then. So he's like he's added to his skill set by being involved in that T20 circuit. Um, and as I said, being able to bowl those tough overs. He knows the ground so well in India. Uh, that, that Dion's alluded to, you know, he's, he's bowled at all the IPL venues, which are all the grounds that, that New Zealand's going to play during the World Cup. Um, I think Matt Henry's going to be the interesting one. Um, I mean, we, we talk about Southie and, and the fact that he he obviously swings the ball and he's a great combination with Bolt, but, you know, Matt Henry's been the, the best performer in ODI cricket for New Zealand with the new ball for the last probably four years. Um, we, you know, take Trent Bolt out of it. So... You know, whether they're going to go with that more of that seam bowler in India, whether they'll go for the bounce bowler in, in uh, Jamison, whether they'll go for air speed um, with Milne or Ferguson. I mean, those are, are really interesting talking points. And whether we actually get to see the bolt Saudi combination, um, you know, will be interesting. I, personally, I would, because um, I just think Tim's knows the conditions well and he's able to bowl in different phases. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see how, you know, how New Zealand line up and how the the selectors see it, because they, they do have so many options. Could you just uh, explain to our viewers, I mean, naturally I could do it for you, but I'm not <laughs> sure I would do it justice here. Just explain, or, or maybe Dion, you explain to us what a knuckleball is and, and how Trent's working that into his repertoire. Oh, I want to hear Mike explain it. I'm not, you I'm... don't want to hear me explain <laughs> it? <laughs> My understanding is, so is it, it, obviously it's the way they hold it and it's just not a full grip. So it's coming out like a slower ball, but it probably wobbles a little bit. That's the old fashioned version anyway. But um, I'm, I imagine they've evolved it, Mike. Yeah, they have. I mean, it's come from baseball, hasn't it? where, you know, the ball flights in the air. So, you know, you still keep the same arm speed, but um, you basically hold the ball, uh, yeah, in the end of the, the end of the fingers and it just basically floats out. So it's got no backspin on it. So normally when you release the ball, it's got a level of backspin. So, you know, it either swings or there's a, there's a general trajectory. Whereas when the ball just floats out, it, it literally floats. So you keep the same arm speed, uh, really hard to pick up. And, and those that, that have a good one, are particularly difficult to attack at the death, and um, Trent's certainly mastered that over the last, at least the last six months. Um, so, you know, I think New Zealand will benefit for that this World Cup for sure. I was, that was exactly what I was going to say. I was going to do that with my hand and everything. It would have been great. Um, so who, who would you like to see in, in that um, sort of the bowling makeup there? Would you, would you like the, the Saudi Trent combo? Do you think Henry will play a part, Dion? Oh well, I, I mean, I think that they've, everyone there has to be expected to to play a part. They're, they're looking for the best combinations, right? I like I like Milne and I, and I like um, Ferguson in some mix because I think that they've just got that X factor that can play take, together. Or uh, no, not they? necessarily together. I think you're going to be picking one of them over the other. I think um, I think also though that you know those slower bowlers. I, the one thing I've I think in these conditions, you know, those little slider sort of fast spinners that don't spin. Someone like that actually, it's not the most pretty type of bowler but you know I'd be looking for someone you know maybe it's Ravindra maybe it's um, you know Mitchell even just being a bit street smart someone like that's going to have a really crucial role I think through middle overs um, particularly as this, as you get deeper into the tournament and you get maybe get some more tired wickets um, but look the, the top there you, you know you, they're, they're going to be asking these same questions in that in that selection group and probably you know, the, the heat is a little bit on Tim Southey, maybe. Um, you know, he's, he, he's slightly longer in the tooth. Um, he tends to bowl those swinger, swingers with a little bit more along it, which in these conditions can go for a few more, as opposed to Henry bowls into it. But, um, you know, I think there's, there's enough in that mix that they're going to come up with a good combination. I think probably the other one is Kyle Jameson. If he's 
fit and coming in there, he adds real interest into that lineup. And if he can sort of hit back of a length, um, you know, he he adds that that sort of value there too. I, I'd love to talk about the Jameson one because I was I was doing uh, the the Rugby World Cup squad announcement um, earlier this this week, and we were talking about Harvey um, coming straight back in off the back of a very long injury. He's coming straight back into the All Blacks. Effectively, he's only played one other game. Um, Ethan Blackadder was in um, injury doubt. I've gone I've gone rugby in a cricket show. How good is this? Um, there was a little bit of an issue around that, but they were saying he didn't have enough experience at that level to be a Harvey and come straight in. So I ask you, Hess, about Kyle Jameson. In the Test format, we know exactly what he's capable of. We know exactly what he can do, and I imagine you you go depending on his his bowling loads. He goes straight back in. But in the one day format, do you think he's proven himself enough to be in you know straight in that uh, one day World Cup mix? Not overseas. Um, in New Zealand conditions, he's done that third seamer role particularly well. Um, in ODI cricket overseas, he's still a work in progress. So, you know, I think you come back to Dion's point about coming out of winter, not having even played club cricket in recent times. I mean, I know he did towards the back end of the season. Um, but he's coming back now um, straight into international cricket. It will be tough. Um, hopefully they could organise some games for him uh, in England beforehand. That would be you know, that would be prudent if they're able to do that, even going over and playing a few pub games to sort of get out in the middle and get some games under his belt. Um, but he is a point of difference. Uh, and he also has the ability to bat eight, which, you know, outside of that, we're a little bit thin from... You know, from seven down, um, you know, got Satner at seven without Graceful there. Uh, if you end up going for Sodi, then once again your, your batting depth is questioned. So therefore, Jamison becomes an option, um, and I think they'll be wanting to give him every opportunity to show that he's got that you know, that X factor that which we have seen in the Test cricket. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's not many six foot seven blokes you've got that can run in and bowl 140 when he gets it right. Um, and arm the bad in particular. Um, there's plenty of bounce in arm the bad. There's plenty of bounce in hyper bad. So there are two grounds where I think you know, you'd like to have that option. And we love the aggression, Dion. Someone I know you used to love the aggression was, was yourself. And I also know how you score your kids' cricket. Uh, no, I'm just joking. But um, not really. Uh, when you look at him, um, you, you know, unfortunately, you also know a little bit about injuries. When you're coming back from something which your back's big, it's big when you're a bowler and a man of that stature. What what does that do to you mentally when you're preparing to hopefully make a World Cup squad? Yeah, well, he's had sort of one false start already, hasn't he? He sort of tried to come back and, 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 and sort of had to go back into the wilderness. And I think he, it, it will be looming large in his, in his brain. And, and there's that the contradiction of, like, you want to play for New Zealand. You know you're good enough. Um, that's, the, that's the place you want to be. You want to be in the squad. You, don't want, you, know, you know, you want to... Yeah for all manner of reasons that's where you want to be um, but the reality of it is what's best for you ultimately is this cricket and building up slowly and building up and building up and building up and I, I know when I was playing you, I could play domestic cricket and play within myself at 80% and you were still a star and but the step up that extra 20% that it's required to, to perform at international or to, to even just to hold your own international um, was the bit that can often be the, the breaking point. And so you really want to know internally that you've played enough cricket um, and feel right on your own terms. And so if there's any doubt there at all, that's that's where you sort of can be a bit ginger and, and probably leads to more injuries. But look, it, you know, he's got good people around him. It's The, the environment has changed so much since when, than when I was playing. You know, we, we didn't have people advising, we didn't have workloads. There was if basically a select a picture you when played. And I think, They'll be looking at him, they'll be monitoring him really closely and they'll be giving him every chance, as he said, to get in. Um, but I think if there's any danger at all, they'll just be making the right calls alongside him because he's too important. If we can get him back for a five, another five or ten years in a career, um, he's going to be a huge asset. Absolutely is. Let's take a look at the uh, World Cup squads that these two gentlemen have picked. We'll start with you, Hess. Uh, if we look at your World Cup squad there, Conway, Guptill, Williamson, Mitchell, Latham, Philip Satner, Southey, Sody, Ferguson... In brackets there, Milne, Bolt Nation, Henry, Young, Ravindra. Now, that um, that all-rounder role, we know how important that can be over in India as well. Talk us through your squad and why. Yeah, I mean, there's a few brackets there. I mean, the, the Guptill, Finn Allen, Blundell, um, you know, debate at the top. I mean, Finn Allen uh, in T20 cricket, he's explosive, uh, but he hasn't quite grabbed his opportunities yet in ODI cricket. Um, averaging early 30s, so he's, he's got a sniff, but New Zealand would want to see more from him. I, th I think they like that explosive style at the top. 
And if he does get going and can bat for 20 overs, then he can change the game. But we just haven't seen it enough. And, and that's something that the New Zealand selectors will be very keen to see on this tour. Um, Blundell, I mean, I've got Blundell there as a, as a backup keeper in India. Um, I know Conway's there, but, you know, for me, Blundell, if you are going to have to play three spinners, um, to, you know, you've got to make that decision whether he's going to do that um, capably enough or whether that's going to take away from his batting perspective. Uh, and for me, Will Young, I, I think he's, I've got him there as the backup batter, but to be fair, you know, average is 50, strike rate of 90 in ODI cricket. He, he's got to be pushing for a case at the top of the order as well. So I think that's the position that, that the Black Caps will want to get right. Um, and that all comes into place if, if Williamson is fit. And obviously I, I'm assuming that he is. Uh, I'll go back to the air, the point around air speed. You know, you've got to take one of Milne or Ferguson, um, and maybe you've got to take both in your squad if, if Jamison's not fit. Um, both of those two have had sort of injury concerns. Um, and I guess without Michael Bracewell, who provided that all-round capability, you've, you've got to look at someone like Ravindra. Um, and that's where Glenn Phillips, to be fair, becomes more of an important player with the ball. Um, You've got to have an off spinner in that squad uh, in those conditions, particularly Chennai. You know, bowling in Chennai, your finger spinners are absolutely critical. So um, he becomes such an important role uh, batting the six and bowling those off spinners. So that's why I sort of interest in the mix. And so let's take a look now at Dion's World Cup squad to head over to India later in the year. A few, uh, a few different players for you there. You've put Chapman uh, in your squad. Um, you're obviously presuming that Kane is fit as well. We've talked a lot about the bowlers, but if there is no Kane Williamson, is our batting, how much trouble are we in? Well, the first thing I'd say, I, I haven't been as greedy as Mike, so I've only named 15. Yeah, so okay, I see what you've done there. <laughs> <laughs> Solid <laughs> instructions, fair. Um, but, um, uh, no, uh, sorry, Mike. Um, but, um, no, look, I've gone through, I, look, we're um, similar, I think, um, you know, I've named Blundell because I like to have a proper keeper. I think in those conditions, uh, you know, uh, having, a, having a proper keeper is essential. So I think if Latham goes down, Conway, I, I just think he's such a crucial batsman that I don't want him behind the stumps for the whole time. So um, I, I'm backing Kane Williamson to come back. That, so there is no second choice there. It's like I think he's just too crucial. So I can't imagine us um, going into the tournament without him. So I think he's got to come back um, by hook or by crook. Um, and then I've, I guess a, a little bit of the sort of the, um, the excitement factor around Finn Allen, um, Glenn Phillips, those guys are, you know, they're fun to watch and they're exciting. And I think they are hopefully coming of age. Um, you know, I've probably been a little bit harsh leaving Will Young out. Um, I probably went um, off the back of a T20 form watching Mark Chapman smack it out of the park and my kids getting super excited about it. I think it's going to take someone like that to come in at certain times in the tournament and, and wrestle the game away or just take the game out of the hands of the opposition. And so I think we need that excitement factor. Um, and likewise with the ball, that's why, you know, um, both Adam Milne, um, and um, and, and, and Lockie. Lockie Ferguson, yeah. So I like, I just like the speed. I think it, no one likes facing it. I think they've both played enough cricket now too, where, you, where we've seen them knock knock the, the poles over at the death and switch it up a little bit. Um, and then um, they've got the experience of the other bowlers around them. But um, probably a little light on spin in my in my lineup. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't seen a lot of Glenn Phillips bowl, so I, I come back to that earlier point. You know, Mitchell Phillips, someone through those sort of little grubby little overs through the middle are going to have to do some really smart street work sort of type bowling. Um, and, and I think that's going to be really crucial, uh, certainly as you lo the longer you go on, you know, because I think um, we'll be able to blast people out of the top. Um, it's about holding through that middle period. Yeah, you did right. Uh, Hess, you've got a bit of news this week. You, your tenure with uh, RCB has, has finished. You, you've come to the end of your time there. First of all, congratulations. Uh, what an achievement over there. You did some good things with that side. And How are you feeling about it all? Yeah, very comfortable, Laura. I think, you know, four years with RCB, um, I guess he came in having finished last uh, in 2018 and 19, which is actually quite a nice time to take over a team, to be honest. So. We made the playoffs three years in a row. Um, we didn't make it last year. We missed out uh, last ball um, of the round robin. So, uh, and it's it just sort of shows it's it's a pretty cutthroat, um, you know, business the IPL. But you know that when you go into it. So, I thoroughly enjoyed working with RCB. Worked with some pretty good players. Um, see De Villiers, Coley. Uh, worked with Fuff quite, um, you know, quite a lot over the last two years. Uh, so really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, fortunate enough that. Um, I guess having spent a bit of time over there that 
and, and having done reasonably well, that, that there'll be some other opportunities and doors that, that will open up. Um, it's probably a matter of not jumping at the first opportunity and, and making sure you get one that actually sort of stimulates you. So, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just wait to see what happens over the next few weeks. Yeah, no, and I know that those players, those players that you mentioned, all speak incredibly highly of you, and you did a wonderful job. So congratulations. There has been some some movement in terms of the coaching space space for the IPL. Our very own Dan Vittori is now taking over um, Hyderabad. Uh, Dion, what what happened to you? You want to get into coaching? Is it just your kids, or maybe move into the IPL? It seems a place to go. Oh no, I'm, I think I leave it to the leave it to the professionals. I think Mike and his guys. Uh, I'm a bit, out, bit too long in the tooth for coaching these days, but um, I'm not sure if my patience uh, can it through the whole game. Certainly not Test cricket. Um, <laughs> You've moved past Test now. T20s maybe. Um, but yes, no, there has been some changes obviously with uh, Langer as well uh, being a new coach. How, how do you feel about that landscape? But like you say, it is cutthroat so it's um, exciting? Yeah, oh, look, it'll be exciting for Dan. I mean, obviously he had a stint a few years ago and and, and he's probably done a heck of a lot more coaching since then. So I think like anything, you know, it's, it's difficult as a player to go straight from playing pretty much straight into coaching. Um, it is it is a slightly different skill, and, and certainly Dan's done the hard yards since then. He's been to Bangladesh. Um, he's obviously worked uh, with the Australian team as the assistant coach, and I'm sure he's been hanging out for this opportunity to be a head coach again. So I'm sure he'll do very well. Um, it sort of shows it is quite cutthroat, isn't it? I mean, Brian Lara was there for one season. Um, the year before, they had another coach just for the one season. So I'm not sure how long Dan's contract is, but um, I'm sure he'll do well. Um, it's interesting, at the end of the this IPL, there's now 10 teams, and the six teams that didn't make the, the playoffs, there was rumours about all the the six coaches getting the flick. So there could well be some further opportunities out there for for other coaches around the scene. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Lang is be his first foray into the IPL as well, um, and he's going to a relatively new franchise. Um, Andy Flowers moved from, from that franchise, luck now, to, to RCB. So... Um, yeah, there's always plenty of movement, but yeah, I'm sure Dan will do well. I look forward to seeing how he, um, yeah, how he does. Absolutely. There does seem to be an awful lot of movement in the IPL. Maybe I can get a gig as a coach. I've got a lot to say. Um, Dion, let's talk about World Cups uh, one more time with you because they are special. Um, and we've Hess and I have spoken at length about our favourite moments. Most of ours come from 2015 when Hess was in charge. And that's my first real memory of watching other people get the fever for cricket. Like, they just loved the game off the back of it. For you, was there a memory, was there a moment, was there a game that you loved more than others? Oh, well, we played a great World Cup in, um, in India, which I met, that was a fantastic one. I think uh, the 96, I think, somewhere back there, way back <laughs> in the years of that. Um, but I remember just the did vibe. Did you get here then? I did yeah, here then, yes. Sorry. Yeah, I did. And, um, yeah, I just the vibe of, of being at a World Cup is, as a player is fantastic. You know, you've got that one or, or multiple venues, but that sort of one sort of feeling that you're all playing together and every, all the great players are there and it, it's sort of a scene. Um, I remember that being a real buzz as a player and just knowing that, you know, everyone's watching your game, and, you know, whereas in you play in isolation in your own country, you know, no one else really cares. But so it was, um, I remember that being a big thing. Um, we had a good tournament in, the, in 99 as well. I'm sort of sad because I feel like we could have done better in that tournament. We got knocked out, I think, in the semis by Pakistan and just that left feeling of the things undone. That's what I remember, I remember raining in Leeds that tournament, I feel like. Yeah, it was a sort of a, it was just probably probably a perfect tournament for us in our style of cricket but at the time. Um, but we And we did well to get to the semi, but we just let ourselves down in one game. And that's all it takes in the final. And I think off the back, that, I go back to that belief, I think probably if I go back to it, you know, that we galvanised that squad to go on and do better things later. But we probably lost that game through not enough belief um, in our, with it internally. And so I think... Um, you know, you, you, those things you remember more than the, the successes, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he says, as a coach, you'll know all about that, that belief that you've got to create within that environment. I felt like in 2015 there was absolute belief in every, because you backed them, you and Baz backed that team in such a way that they just went out and they were themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it was the most um, skillful side that we've ever had. It was certainly a very good good side, as was the 99 one and 95 one as Dion alluded to. So often it just takes, you know, a few players to to probably play above themselves and then that confidence can just flourish through the rest of the group. Um, and you get on a bit of a roll in those tournaments and um, and everyone sort of jumps on board. So, um, yeah, I remember that 99 World Cup pretty vividly. I remember um, 
uh, Jeff Allett was breaking a few bats with those those white Duke's balls, wasn't he? With swinging around corners. With his sock coming um, out of the Yeah, the, the bunny. I always remember thinking it looked like a bunny's <laughs> butt right. because he cut the toe of his sock and it would just bounce along. Uh, it was he and Warnie that's were the top wicket takers. Uh, yeah, that, were they? that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um. And, and you he had, had those silver. Didn't you have those silver jackets? Was that part of your kit or something? No, oh, we had, I think it was all teal. Yeah, teal. We had the teal. The teal like, in yeah, it was pretty heavy Because you had quite a great test series, either pre or post World Cup, didn't you? After, because we sat on in England, yeah, afterwards. But um, I mean, actually, that's a highlight. Beating, we beat in, uh, Australia at um, Cardiff, that's which right. was um, which which was a great game. And that was one of the first ones where I think Jeff came in and he, had, he used to hold the ball. It looked like he held it with three hands, almost like a knuckleball hold. <laughs> but but it's, I think the Aussies was the first time they'd seen him, and he just kept bowling these in swingers and knocking them over so I remember that as well and then Roger Two's smacking it over the boundary to win the game. Roger Two's oh, <laughs> yeah. I remember, remember yeah. yeah oh yeah oh World Cups does funny things gentlemen I want to thank you so much for your time today really appreciate it Hess you've been wonderful you can raise your curtain now let some sunlight in <laughs> Yeah, there's not too much out there now, Laura, but thank you. Stunner, stunner. Yeah, beautiful. Dion, thank you so much for joining us for the first time. No worries, no worries. And thank you guys for joining us. We'll catch you next time on No Boundaries.